Australian Tim Gibbs is one of the earliest pioneers of the sport of motocross or scrambles as it was known in the early days. His influence was worldwide both on and off the track. Tim got his break in the 1950s working for the British AMC, AJS and Matchless Motorcycle Factory as a tester and later became a works rider. He was the first Australian to win an international six-day trial gold medal. Then he added motocross and road racing to his repertoire to help fund his travels across the United Kingdom, Europe, the Iron Curtain countries and later the United States, Japan and New Caledonia. He was immediately successful in motocross and went on to have an eight-year professional international career, becoming the first Australian to win a European Motocross Grand Prix, winning two 500cc rounds in Czechoslovakia on the 22nd of May 1960 and Poland a week later. While in Europe, Tim was even employed as a stunt rider on the famous American World War II movie The Great Escape. Tim helped the Japanese motorcycle factories design their first breakthrough lightweight two-stroke motocross machines and train local riders, receiving gold life membership from the Motorcycle Federation of All Japan in 1985. And if that's not enough, he introduced international motocross to both New Zealand and Australia in the late 1960s and 70s. Then in the 1980s and 90s, Tim managed the New Zealand World Motocross of Nations teams three times. At Unadilla, USA in 1987, in Manjum Western Australia 1992 and Roggenberg, Switzerland 1994. In 2016, Tim was inducted into the Motorcycling New Zealand Hall of Fame. He's lived in New Zealand since returning from Europe in 1963. Tim Gibbs was born on the 12th of October 1933 at Longville near Sydney in New South Wales. Tim's father remarried in December 1938, a year after his wife died. The family moved to Waterfall Gully near Adelaide in South Australia to start a new life when Tim was four years old. From an early age, Tim was fascinated by motor vehicles. While studying at an agricultural high school, his mind was on designing suspension and transmission systems for cars and bikes. But as cars were too expensive for a young lad, he opted for a motorcycle and bought his first bike in 1947. He paid 10 quid, 20 Australian dollars, for a 1925 model 300cc side valve JAP engine new Imperial. In 1949, at age 16, Tim left school to work on farms so that he could be involved with engines, cars, trucks, tractors and motorcycles. In 1953, Tim returned to Adelaide to work for an earth-moving company to get him closer to the motorcycle scene. After taking up enduro racing, in those days called reliability trials, he got the racing bug and set off for England in 1955 to check out the motorcycle racing scene with an eye on trials and ISDT type events. But one could not earn a living through trials, so Tim also planned to check out the motocross scene in Europe, where he'd heard that riders were paid well. At the time, only one Australian motorcyclist had preceded him, Victorian Scrambles rider Les Sheehan two years earlier. Sheehan made the AJS Matchless factory team and became one of Australia's fastest motocross racers when he returned to Victoria. On the 29th of October 1955, as a 22-year-old, Tim bought a one-way ticket and sailed to England. Exactly two months after landing in England, Tim managed to land a dream job as a prototype test rider for AMC, the AJS and Matchless Motorcycle Factory.
Riding around 450 kilometres a day through the British winter traffic gave him lots of experience on a variety of English-made bikes, including matchless, AJS, DOT and aerial machines. Working here also enabled Tim to purchase the X factory bikes and get personal tips from works rider Gordon Jackson. Tim met Jackson, the British trials ace, by chance, who invited him to practice at his family farm near Swanley in Kent. One particular section was a deep bomb crater from World War II, which his English mates would push Tim into, then give him instructions on how to get out. This challenge helped Tim learn throttle control and balance while keeping his feet on the footrests to get out. The scramble events in England paid handsome prize money, so Tim started racing this branch of motorsport to boost his wages so he could take time off to ride in events like the Scottish six-day trial, Welsh three-day trial and other major observed trials. AMC competitions manager Hugh Viney noticed Tim's talent and provided him with a factory ISDT international six-day trial bike and made him a member for the factory team for the 1956 ISDT. There were no formal contracts in place, no payments and not even a handshake, just a casual remark. That was how Hugh Viney worked. Tim won a gold medal at this event, becoming the first Australian rider to achieve this. The win brought him attention and opportunities, where the prize money enabled him to buy his own car and become independent rather than relying on others to get to events. Gibbs competed with success at high-profile international motocross events and World Championship Grand Prix between 1955 and 63. In 1959, he met another Kiwi, Ken Cleghorn, who travelled to England with a few mates to race motocross. The pair occasionally rode the same events and travelled together to share expenses. Over the next two years, Tim recorded wins at all levels, becoming the first Australian to win a round of the European Grand Prix circuit. In 1960, Tim won both a 500cc Polish and Czechoslovakian European motocross Grand Prix rounds. These races were gruelling, three races of 45 minutes plus two laps. And at times, Tim would ride the 250cc class as well on the same day. That year, Tim also won two international events in Misselbach, Austria, and Levu, France, and won the Sussex Motocross Grand National in Great Britain. It was during this time Tim first met Ken Cleghorn's sister Joan, who he would later marry. Ken's parents and Joan travelled to England to watch Ken race motocross, where Tim was also competing. Tim and Joan got on well, but she returned home to New Zealand at the end of the year and Tim continued racing in the United Kingdom, across Europe with trips to the United States during winter for racing experience and to escape the cold British winter. While in Europe, Gibbs raced behind the Iron Curtain, motocross, grass track and enduro events in East Germany, Poland and Czechoslovakia. His first venture into the Russian Red Zone was in June 1957 for the famous Tetero Grass Track meeting in East Germany. Tim travelled more than a thousand kilometres from his last international event in Niort in France to compete there. Tetero was behind the Iron Curtain when there was the Cold War between Russia and the United States. 
In communist countries, there was no freedom and crossing borders was tense and extremely dangerous for Westerners. No photos were permitted. There were long delays. Barriers were in place to prevent drive-throughs and escapes. Plus, there were sniffer dogs, vehicle inspections and incessant questioning. After much interrogation and having his English motorcycle magazines confiscated, Tim was eventually allowed to enter East Germany, but had to be accompanied by a KGB officer. Amongst the international riders were two Aussies who Tim had never met before, Roy East and Les Fisher from New South Wales. Les and Roy raced really well at this major annual race and would return for some years. Coincidentally, another Aussie fisher, Ray, from Victoria, who was not related to Les, won the race in 1963. Tim's most dangerous situation behind the Iron Curtain happened later that year at the 1957 ISDE in Czechoslovakia. Tim befriended a local motorcycle rider who took an interest in his racing goggles, which Tim sold to him. In communist countries, this was considered the worst sort of black marketing, and the penalties were serious. Tim was taken to a dimly lit room with an interpreter and interviewed by two KGB policemen. Fortunately, Tim talked his way out of the problem and was released. But unfortunately, there were dire consequences for the local rider. Tim later discovered that the local rider was sent off to the salt mines in Siberia for two years, just for buying a pair of racing goggles. His family had no idea where he was. He simply vanished. Late in 1958, Tim returned to Australia to escape the British National Service and winter. He returned to the United Kingdom around March 1959, all fit and ready to race. But when winter came this year, Tim headed to the United States to race. On the 5th of November 1959, he departed Southampton on the Queen Mary, bound for New York. On arrival at the Indian Motorcycle Factory Company in Springfield, Massachusetts, Tim received a warm welcome and manager James Hill lent him his bike for a scramble the next day. Despite having won three gold ISDT medals and many scrambling wins on the continent, Tim could not get an AMA Pro license. Amazingly, he was told to join a local club to get some experience first. Needless to say, he won his first event, which unexpectedly for Tim was in wet and muddy conditions, something that he was hoping to avoid by leaving England. Prompted by James Hill, the AMA referee allowed Tim to start in the final, but behind the field so he wouldn't get in the leading rider's way. He rode a Royal Enfield drag bike fitted with knobby tyres for the day which he borrowed for the race. As it turned out, the other riders got in his way. Tim took the lead on the first lap and won the event, lapping most of the field. Tim won the 1959 Hesperian Californian Hair Scramble ahead of Bud Eakins, who he would later work with as a stunt rider in the Great Escape movie and ride trials with in Europe. In the new year, on the 10th of January, Tim went practising with Eakins in the desert to prepare for the coming Big Bear Run in Orange County MC Lucerne Valley in California. In his first attempt at desert racing, Tim finished 23rd overall after leading early. It was very dusty and Tim purposely stayed in second position behind the experienced Eakins. He inherited the lead when Eakins' gearbox blew apart, but got lost 10 miles from the finish.
Tim's second trip to the USA was in November 1960 when Englishman Brian Sharp accompanied him. This time the pair flew from London to Los Angeles by a BOAC Britannia plane, one of the first turbo propeller planes. Tim competed in many events in the US, including the Californian Trials and TT Scramble Championships, the Crater Bowl Scramble and Checkers National Hare Hound, which was a desert race. Again, he showed speed in the desert to lead the 40-mile event for more than halfway, until he got lost for the second time. At the end of the 1961 season, Tim travelled to New Zealand where he rekindled his relationship with Joan Cleghorn. The couple married on the 16th of December 1961, 10 days after the first real motocross event in New Zealand at the now famous Woodville Circuit, which is the venue for the country's motocross Grand Prix. After all the jet-setting and international events, Tim found it difficult to settle and soon hatched a plan to stage an international motocross event in New Zealand based on the events that he had competed in abroad. He offered one of the flashier trophies he had won in America to be used as the Woodville Trophy. Tim and his new brother-in-law Ken Cleghorn fought handlebar to handlebar, with Ken winning the inaugural event in December 1961. But Tim took revenge winning the following year before returning to Europe for the 1962 motocross season. The newlyweds Tim and Joan travelled together to Europe where Tim continued racing motocross for another two years. Gibbs' motorcycling experiences were as diverse as they were thrilling. In 1962, he teamed up with close friend and US desert racer Bud Eakins to be the stunt rider in the classic movie The Great Escape. The World War II Hollywood movie was filmed in southern Germany. Eakins was hired as a stand-in for a then fresh-faced young actor called Steve McQueen, and Tim helped plan all the motorcycle stunts while performing some himself. The film had five minutes of motorcycle action, but many felt that this made the movie. McQueen's character, an English prisoner of war escaper, was required to leap a stolen motorcycle over a tall barbed wire fence after killing a German soldier by placing a head-high tripwire over the road as he rode through. Gibbs played the German soldier who was decapitated in the accident, as well as setting up and testing McQueen's jump stunt, which was performed by Bud Eakins when the cameras rolled. All the time, Tim was unaware of the significance of the film and the company he was with. He befriended McQueen, and Gibbs' wife actually went for a ride with McQueen on the back of his bike between film shoots. Back in England on the 14th of October 1963, Tim was a member of the winning side that beat the British in a test match at Pembury near Brands Hatch, having beaten the Poms the previous year. The 1963 winning Australian team also included Charlie West, Kelvin Franks, Bob Walpole, Ray East, Ray Fisher and Jack Pringle. At the end of 1963, Tim and Joan decided to settle in New Zealand and stopped over in Japan on the way to attend the 10th Tokyo Motor Show, covering it for the British press. It was Japan Airlines' first direct London to Tokyo flight. The Japan stopover proved to be the start of a new beginning, with Tim landing many jobs there. He formed new relationships and returned many times, running motocross and enduro training camps for the Japanese riders. Tim also helped lay the foundations for the Japanese motorcycle factories to design and build the new innovative lightweight two-stroke machines, which were about to take the world by storm. The early Japanese motocross bikes were really just modified street bikes, mainly small 75 and 125cc bikes that were not really suitable for motocross. The designers had never seen open country, let alone a motocross track, so they were most interested to learn and improve their bikes. 
Tim was able to help them design and build the first crop of Japanese motocross bikes working with the Japanese manufacturers until 1970. The developments also included agricultural farm motorcycles that took the Japanese factory officials a lot of convincing before they would manufacture and sell these machines. In 1985, the Motorcycle Federation of All Japan made Tim a Gold Life member for his contribution to the industry. After eight years as a professional racer in Britain, Europe and America, Tim Gibbs and his wife Joan made Manawatu in New Zealand home. Tim co-founded the Woodville Motocross event and established the New Zealand Motocross Grand Prix at Woodville with the backing and involvement of the Manawatu Orion Motorcycle Club. This event has continued to run every year at the same grassy farmland since 1961, with its 60th anniversary held in January 2021. Woodville now stands alone as the biggest and best motocross in New Zealand, second to none in significance, including the national championships. Gibbs played a pivotal role in making the Woodville motocross what it is today. In September 1965, Tim opened his own motorcycle shop in Palmerston North, then in the early 70s moved to a new location closer to where Joan's family lived. It was one of the biggest motorcycle retail shops in New Zealand at the time, selling up to 100 bikes per month. Tim sold his business in 1984. In December 1965, Tim and Joan's son Peter was born and daughter Jodie joined the family in 1970. In 1964, Tim organised and rode the now well-established Gold Leaf International Motocross Series. This series covered seven different race venues on both the North and South Islands of New Zealand and featured three international riders from England and Europe. The first event at Woodville was held on the 10th of December 1961. But 1962 was the first big one that was advertised. In those days, no one in New Zealand knew what motocross was, so spectators poured in more from curiosity. Several thousand people arrived and the rest is history. Then the first international riders came for the 1964-65 series, German George Hauger, Englishman Arthur Harris and Max Morf from Switzerland. Over the years, it became a tradition to christen the overseas international motocross riders by throwing them in the Manawatu River, which flows through the Woodville motocross circuit. This was Tim's idea, and it turned out to be a major crowd draw. In December 1966, Tim extended the international motocross series to include Australia, and he also competed in these races. Hearn Hill, Western Australia was the first round, then Snake Gully, South Australia, Christmas Hills, Victoria, followed by Wollongong, New South Wales, before crossing the Tasman for seven more events at different venues across New Zealand. The 1966-67 Australian and New Zealand International Motocross Tour featured international riders Freddie Postman from Austria, UK riders brothers Randy and Tony Owen, plus Gordon Adsit and Gibbs. A second tour was held in 1967-68 featuring John Lewis from Wales, Gunnar Lindstrom from Sweden, American J.N. Roberts, Morley Sheriffs, Gordon Holland, Ivan Miller and Tim Gibbs from New Zealand, Laurie Alderton from New South Wales and Victorian Ray Fisher. During the 1969-70 tour, British riders Jeff Smith and Dave Bickers tied for first place, so the trophy was cut in half. Neither of these world champions had won half a trophy, so they really enjoyed the experience. 
A local trophy manufacturer offered to finish the job neatly, but unfortunately the trophies went missing before they were presented. British brothers Randy and Tony Owen returned for the 1970-71 series, along with Scottish champion Jim Aird, who won the opening round and overall series. The annual international series was extremely popular and successful, attracting thousands of spectators and boosting the sport of motocross in Australia and New Zealand. Tim continued to race motorcycles until he was 60 years old. He decided to stop racing when he became aware that his reflexes were not 100% on the ball, as he described it. Amazingly, he had an enjoyable, injury-free career and won six ISDE gold medals and a heap of international motocross races. Since retiring from racing, Tim continued organising various motorcycling events, including motocross, enduros, trials and road racing, as well as taking up car racing and rallying. During the 1980s to 90s, Tim became the manager for the New Zealand teams competing in the World Motocross of Nations and International Six-Day Enduro. In 2019, Tim was invited to England to participate in a special rerun of the 1963 film The Great Escape. Tim was accompanied by his granddaughter Sarah as his minder. They also attended together a special display of The Great Escape at the Triumph Motorcycle Visitor Centre at Hinckley. On the way to the Northern Hemisphere, Tim stopped at Melbourne to see his old motocross friend Ray Fisher, who also competed in Europe. Tim also attended Ray's induction ceremony into the Australian Motorsports Hall of Fame. Ray's greatest achievement was winning the 1963 Tetero Grass Track motorbike race in East Germany in front of over 100,000 spectators. It's every motocross rider's dream to race professionally overseas in Europe and America, but few get to realise this. Tim Gibbs amazingly achieved this during the 1950s and 60s, when the sport of motocross was in its infancy. He became the first Australian to win an ISDE gold medal and European motocross Grand Prix. His career highlights included winner of six gold medals as a member of the Australian and British ISDE teams, winner of two international motocross events in 1960, winner of the Sussex Motocross Grand National, winner of the US Californian Trials Championship. And off the track, Tim influenced the development of the first Japanese motocross and agricultural bikes and introduced international motocross to New Zealand and Australia. In 2016, Gibbs was inducted into the Motorcycle New Zealand Hall of Fame. Given he was born in New South Wales, and had a huge influence on the motocross in Australia and around the world, he must also be a candidate for the Australian Motorsport Hall of Fame.